Hey, Smart Christian, I want to talk to you about something that I think we all need to, from time to time, check ourselves on. Have you ever seen, have you ever noticed the angry Christian? And I mean the Christian who may in their mind, may in their heart, may think that what they're doing is correct, and maybe they are, but maybe their approach is not the correct way. In today's culture, especially on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, it's easy to be upset with people who may push out bad doctrine um, because you're getting inundated all the time with people with foolish things that are happening. And so you might want to, um, because you're angry, and it might even be a righteous anger, a righteous indignation, you may want to lash out and push back. But the way we do it matters also. Not that we do it. Sometimes it matters that we do it. Sometimes we ought not do it. But there's really never a bad time to defend the gospel. Now, there's always, though, there can be a bad way to defend the gospel. Paul says in Ephesians 4.25, he says, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you with his neighbors, for we are members of one another. So therefore, it's okay to let someone know, hey, what you're doing, what you're saying is incorrect, at least as far as I believe. Now, it could be, though, that what you're saying, what you believe, you're the one in error and not the other person. But it does matter how you approach the person. It does matter what you say, how you say it. Our knee-jerk response, it should not be to attack or destroy the person, but should be to build the person, to correct the person. But sometimes we start at the highest level of intensity and then hopefully work our way down if the person agrees uh, publicly or privately. But more importantly, if they agree quickly, the quicker they agree, the less of our ire they'll receive. But there's a reason why we're saying this now. There is a difference. There is a difference between talking to the person who is a false teacher, a false prophet, a wolf, versus the person who is being deceived by them. When we do so, we need to remember how we do it. And by the way, it doesn't really matter if it is the, the person who has evil intentions or the person who's just not sure, just maybe ignorant of what's happening. Paul says this, he says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be a really nice, soft word. Sometimes it can be a stern word. But the point is to edify. The issue is this. When you come with guns ablazing and with knives out, the person sees that, hears that, feels that. What is their natural inclination? Their natural inclination is going to be to, to, to do two things. One, to be defensive, to protect themselves of what's coming. And then two, to push back with the exact same force. What if you do so and you're in the wrong and they push back with the same force? Well, you're not going to like it. No one will. Now, a good rebuke, if it's godly, amen. But we need to remember how we do so. Saying something strongly does not mean because you say it's strong or you think that you're strong, doesn't mean that it's sanctified. It does not mean that it is of God, set apart from God. It does not mean that. Sometimes in our anger, in our force, we think that we are really doing the right thing. And sometimes really not. It's hard. It's hard to know when to speak like a lamb. Sometimes we got to be a lion. It's hard to know when the right time to do this. Jesus did it perfectly. We, not so much. Remember, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Let's remember peace. It's okay to be at peace with people that we disagree with. Patience. You remember patience, the way God treated you, how God treated you, what he used in treating you with patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. These are the characteristics that comes out of an actual believer. Gentleness, self-control, raging at people all the time does not show self-control. Against such thing, there is no law. So therefore, we ought to try to emulate that, even when we're dealing with bad doctrine. Now, that should be the first thing that we're looking at, not necessarily attacking the person, but attacking the doctrine that the person is speaking of that might be heretical. All heretical doctrine doesn't come from heretics. Heresy can come from a person who's just ignorant sometimes of the word of God. They don't know any better. But then when you when we attack sometimes, and maybe I've been guilty of that, I want to make sure that people understand my heart as well, that if I say something, if I say it uh, a little harsh, uh, and it does the, the one thing that I don't want to do, which is to push someone who might be listening away, well, then I apologize. We should all be willing to admit that there are going to be times where you say things or do things not in the best light. As Christians, first and foremost, you need to be humble. 
recognize that at some point in time, it's going to be on you. The attention is going to be on you. But when you are the one putting the spotlight on someone else, your motives matter as well. How you handle things is just as important to God as that you handle things. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 2, he says, preach the word, be ready in season, not a season, which is all the time, but he says, reprove. There's going to be times you got to prove someone wrong, rebuke. There's going to be times where someone is wrong, either in, unintentionally or intentionally, and you have to rebuke them, either rebuke the, the sin or rebuke the, the words that are coming out of their mouth. But then also this, look what he says, exhort with great patience. Exhort, that word literally means to comfort, almost to encourage someone. Well, who would you encourage? Well, someone that you want to actually get it, to love them, attacking them, kicking them, beating them, spitting on them. That's not encouraging, guys. I know you might feel that way for some people, but that's not encouraging. And then he says to do so with great patience, with great patience, with great patience. That means being patient towards them, understanding that today they may not get it. Tomorrow they may not get it. As a matter of fact, it's not your timing that matters. It's God's timing. What does he say? One plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. And even though they're not listening to sound doctrine, they have these itching ears, these tickling ears. But Paul says to preach and be patient with those pe those very same people. And so let's be mindful, guys, that you don't get points for being harsh. You don't get heavenly points. You don't get rewards for being brutal in your approach. You do not. Get, as a matter of fact, what it may indicate is a lack of maturity on our part. If all we know how to do is to swing a bat hard. So I can promise you, as Jesus said, the same standard or measure of judgment that you give, you'll get it back. When you judge harshly, you want to make sure that in your harsh judgment that you are absolutely correct. Because what's going to happen is this. The harsh judgments coming back at you might not come back from that same person or it might come in a way that you cannot handle. It may come in a way to break you, to bring you down, to teach you humility. Now, are there times where the person needs harsh rebuke? Sure. Paul, as a matter of fact, in 2 Timothy 4, he's saying to do so patiently and to encourage, but then he also goes on and offers a, str a strong rebuke and even a warning towards someone like an Alexander, Copper Alexander the Coppersmith, who he says resisted their or their message. So there, there is a place in time. But let's just remember, though, even as we're rebuking someone, even as we're giving a person a piece of our mind or what we think the word is trying to tell them, let's remember that we're also Christians, too. You do not get points for being mean. You do not get points for being the harshest that you can be to be able to say, yeah, I'm showing them. You get points for your love, for your kindness, for your gentleness, for your patience. That's what you give. But let's not make it personal. Let's not be angry in how we approach them. Let's be godly because there are some people that are watching who God is going to use you, or maybe not, to bring them closer to God. What did Jesus say? Let your light so shine that men will see your good works and then glorify God. So our approach should be godly, should be loving. And then if we've got to turn the intensity up on a person, well, then amen. But our default personality should not be harsh or angry to someone who wants to be a believer, who calls himself a believer, even if they're not. And let's be honest, all of us are guilty. We all have given the gospel or presented Christ in a negative fashion. We all have. And so let's keep that in mind as we are dealing with, there are going to be wolves, there are going to be false teachers, there are going to be false prophets. We're going to be strong, we're going to be stern, we're going to be firm, but we're also going to be loving as well. Amen.